everybody, Joe Joseph here for the dailysheeple.com and this is your new shot. So let's go to the Clinton, I mean CNN, for their article, Field of Machines, Researchers Grow Crops Using Only Automation. Ah, so here's another, another example of AI going into industry, this time Agra, Big Agra, and beginning the process of phasing out manual labor. We've known this for a long time. I mean, there's been, you know, GPS-controlled tractors and things like that for a very long time. But now, this takes it to the ne next level. Uh, it says, a farm in the United Kingdom is the first in the world to successfully plant, tend, and harvest a crop without a single person ever setting foot in the field. From sowing seeds to picking up the grain, human workers were replaced with automated machines operated from a control room. The project, called Hands-Free Hectare, was completed last month with a yield of four and a half tons of barley, according to the news releases. The automated farm was a joint venture by Harper's Adams University in Shropshire, England, and Precision Decisions, a farming specialist company in York. Now, the automated farm previously uh, had people uh, have automated, they've, they've actually automated sections of the agricultural systems, but funding and interest generally only goes towards one single area. This, according to Kit Franklin, an agricultural engineer on the project, Experts agree that automation technology has been available for some time now, but in recent years, its implementation has been accelerated by decreasing costs and changing demographics in the workforce. See, over there in the UK, why, they don't have them there illegals to go ahead and pick their crops. So what they need, they need some their automation. See, what you need is some illegals over there. Then you don't have to automate. No. See, this is the way that everybody's going to start to go. And they're absolutely right. This automation technology has been around for a long time. It's only because of the coming about of AI and the advancement of technology that it's actually reduced the cost. A good example of that is when, you know, flat screens came out. Uh, you remember when it first came out, a flat screen was like three grand. If you wanted a 42 inch flat screen, uh, now a 42 inch flat screen is practically unheard of. I don't even know if they make a 42 inch anymore. I know they make a 32, but then it goes like right up to 55. So, and, and even then, if you were to buy a 42 inch these days, what's it? 200 bucks, 300 bucks. It's because a, the demand has increased, but more importantly, because of improvements in the manufacturing process because of um, automation. There's a whole host of things that go into it. The prices have come down and this is no different. You know, same with solar panels. Look at solar panels. Before, you know, you had to be rich to have solar panels on your house. You were basically a yuppie. You weren't doing it because it was saving you money. You were doing it because, oh, I feel like I would need to support the environment. No, now it's, Everybody's got solar panels up here in New England, um, in Massachusetts. Massachusetts has a program to where not only will you get a tax deduction for it, but if you don't want to pay for it right off the bat, you can enter into an agreement where you can lease your roof space to the electric company and they'll put solar panels and uh, the whole kit and caboodle on your house for no cost and then they'll give you a portion of what you generate in electricity towards your electric bill. And over the course of 20 years or so, it'll end up being uh, paid off and then and, and you own it. So very interesting how now there is a real push afoot to take advantage of this technology because the cost has come down. But one of the main drivers of this is the cost of human labor. It's a huge driver especially in the field of agriculture. Uh, Matt Nielsen of Automated Solutions, a Utah-based company that converts vehicles from manual to robotic control, said this, it makes sense when you compare the cost of technology to the cost of labor. Absolutely. Look at the cost just alone of healthcare. 
if you've got a if you have to provide health care to your workforce, you're talking about an enormous expense because, you know, and, and the same goes for the people paying into it. You know, the employee share, tremendous expense. Then you have retirement plans that normally companies will pitch into. When you start looking into the loaded rates of a lot of your employees, if you're doing it on the straight and narrow, it ends up costing you a fortune. Heck, even illegal labor these days is starting to slowly but surely creep its way up. So, and it's only going to get worse, you know, as they crack down on immigration, the illegal workforce is going to dwindle. And when it does, that cost is going to go up because there aren't going to be as many. And do you honestly think that there's going to be Americans that go ahead and do it? Maybe, maybe, you know, but not certainly like the droves of people that came up to Mexico just to send their money back to their families. Now, it says, however, there's limitations that need to be assessed. For example, fresh fruits and vegetables are more delicate than sturdy grains and many may and may be more susceptible to bruising and a harvest void of human touch. And there's also a social and country-specific consideration. For example, in Japan, agricultural automation may be a necessity. In India, it could mean unemployment for millions, and that's what you're facing, you know? It's the same thing as to why we still use a lot of these archaic technologies today. You know, for example, the internal combustion engine. We don't need it anymore. But because of the amount of people that are employed, whether it be for petroleum, whether it be, you know, at the Ford plant, you have to phase it out. Because if you just go cold turkey and you slam it, you're going to kill the economy. So you have to phase it out over time. China and the UK have already committed to doing away with gas-powered cars. I think it's by 2035 or 2040, they're saying no more gas-powered cars. Everything's going to be electric. Same thing with our electrical distribution system. It's archaic. needs to be replaced, you know. But are you going to do that and put how many linemen out of a job? And that's what you face. See, it's a sticky wicket and it's not as black and white as people would like it to be. So while this may be good news for some areas of agriculture, I'm telling you, it's not decades we're looking at. It's years until this technology matures and human labor is phased out. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website, at thedailysheeple.com. Have a great day, everybody.